Good evening, welcome to Trending at 10 p.m. I'm Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, a huge new development in the quest to reach new frontiers in space. NASA's new probe InSight has successfully landed on Mars after a remarkable journey. The first images from the probe are out. Tonight, we are joined by a wonderful panel, one of the leading experts in the world on missions to Mars. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh of NASA joins us live from the United States. We are also joined by the former ISRO chairperson Madhavan Nair and our science editor Pallav Bagla, one of India's finest science communicators. As we look at this mission, the science that it promises, the incredible story of the harrowing last minutes before the probe landed and then there's the eternal question, just where do we stand presently in our quest for a manned mission to Mars? Have we overcome the technological challenges and how do the lessons from this InSight mission help mankind. We'll get to that in a moment. Well, it's an incredible day as far as the, the, the space community, as it were, is concerned. NASA's InSight has landed on Mars. It's been a difficult mission. The last couple of minutes were white knuckle uh, moments for uh, the, the entire team which was involved in it. But finally, after a very long uh, trip to Mars, one of the, the, the finest, perhaps the most technologically uh, advanced uh, uh, probe on the surface of Mars uh, is now safe, it's secure, it sent back the first pictures and over the next couple of months we hope to see some fantastic, fantastic science emerging out of all of this. Let's first take a look at the last few moments before InSight actually landed on the surface of Mars. Now traveling at a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. InSight has passed through peak deceleration. Telemetry shows the spacecraft saw about 8 G. InSight should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Ground stations are observing signals consistent with parachute deploy. Marco Alpha, Marco Bravo, maintain lock status. Altitude convergence, the radar has locked on the ground. Yes. Standing by for lander separation. Lander separation commanded. Altitude 600 meters. Altitude 400 meters. 200 meters. 80 meters. 60 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters. 17 meters. Standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. <laughs> An absolutely remarkable moment that uh, capturing really the spirit of or, or the mood of what was going on uh, at Operation Center in uh, at, at the uh, Jet Propulsion Lab of NASA. Uh, once again, reminding you of our panelists, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, chairperson of uh, the NASA Science Operations Working Group on the rover mission, Pallav Bagla, science editor, and Dr. Madhavan Nair, the former ISRO chief. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, let me come to you first. Why is InSight important for the entire world? Well, um, InSight uh, will let us know. So, so different planets evolve in a different way in the solar system. Why does Earth have plate tectonics and Mars does not have plate tectonics? So fundamentally, how does the solar system evolve at a distance uh, from the certain distance from the sun? Will Venus be significantly different? We never had a seismometer or a heat measuring tool on Mars. So this is something which fundamentally is very important to learn. And um, the evolution of the interior um, has great um, uh, repercussions in how the atmosphere is formed. So to really understand Mars, you also have to understand the interior, just not just the surface. Uh, Dr. Uh, Madhavan Nair, uh, I, you know, I mean, we saw this incredible video of the last few minutes before uh, InSight actually landed on the surface of Mars. There was so much tension. You've been through it all with India's space program. Describe to us what that, that feeling is, that entire, that sense of this mission coming to an end one, or, or one way or the other 
uh, in just that landing phase or when in the case of ISRO, when a rocket blasts off into orbit, into space, uh, how is that an incredibly tense moment and the accumulation of the work of engineers and scientists for years? This is a camera that we would be using. First of all, let me congratulate and compliment the entire NASA team for this fantastic achievement. Uh, wanting this uh, last minute, uh, it is really high rising uh, and I was very keenly watching the event uh, in real time uh, earlier. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I was just holding fire breath uh, for the last 600 meters how it was performing. Uh, it's extremely difficult to imagine uh, how in a totally unknown uh, uh, territory and in uh, atmospheric conditions which are very vaguely only known to us to achieve such a landing mission on the surface of the Mars. We had a similar experience uh, twice. Once uh, we were trying to bring the spacecraft recovery experiment, uh, that is a 500 kg spacecraft from space to the in uh, Arabian Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been done uh, really, uh, really, actually, you know, I cannot describe uh, how nervous we were uh, during the last few minutes. Uh, the f starting from the re-entry onwards, if the incident angle is slightly more, it will skim through the atmosphere and go to the outer space once again. If it is too deep, it will burn up in the atmosphere. So it has to be precisely controlled and then later when the speed reduces, uh, with the atmospheric parachute and uh, things like that, uh, it comes to a zone of uh, radio silence. At the time, we will not know what is happening uh, to the uh, capsule. So ultimately, when it touched down at the sea and the spacecraft recovery experiment was re uh, uh, successfully completed, yep. uh, we were all uh, overwhelmed by joy. I can a imagine. A similar incident was uh, when in the moon mission. I can imagine. We'll so, talk about that in a so moment. I just want to go back mission, to Dr. Ghosh. Uh, we had Dr. A, Ghosh, yes, if you could yes. just tell us a little bit about um, why, for, for a larger audience, why um, are the last few minutes of a mission like this so difficult? Uh, what exactly, uh, I mean, how difficult is the math? How, how difficult are the trajectories involved, the operation of the heat shield, the resilience of the spacecraft itself? How does it all come together in the last few minutes? So let me just, uh, what, what are we looking at? You are at the top of the atmosphere, you're traveling at perhaps 12,000 miles an hour. You need to touch the ground at maybe less than five or less than 10 miles per hour. If you touch at like 100 miles per hour, then your sensitive instruments will be destroyed. So that is going to all happen in seven minutes. You have a multi-stage deceleration process, which includes parachutes, heat shields, retro rockets. At the end of this, um, you have to be at this, that velocity. You cannot be at 100 miles an hour. Okay. Now, the lag time between Earth and Mars is about eight minutes. So there is nothing that you can do. Uh, if, you, if you find out that something is going wrong in the process, on Earth, you cannot um, control it because the response time is going to be 16 minutes. So this entire thing has to be completely automated. And so what we do is we um, uh, run millions of simulations and then make the best guess. So it's very um, gut-wrenching in the sense that you don't have any control. It's gut-wrenching because you don't know the profile of the Martian atmosphere. Tell me how many times do we have we traveled through it and we know the density gradients, the density profile, the uh, pressure profile, the temperature profile, we don't. And so um, that makes it even tougher, the, the fact that it is unknown. And so it's a hit and run, hit, hit, trial and error method, you can say. Um, I remember when Spirit landed, 2004, mm -hmm. um, there was a draft um, of wind, uh, which could have perhaps interfered with the safe landing. Uh, but we were uh, fortunately covered so our, it was within the bounds of error that we had calculated. So, so it's a very complex process. And um, I think landing in, on Mars is perhaps the tougher, toughest part, not operating on Mars, not getting to Mars. It's that seven minutes which is going to determine whether those eight years of work come to 
nothing or you have a gorgeous mission afterwards. Okay. Pallav, uh, you've reported uh, very, very closely on India's Mangalyaan mission. Uh, that was uh, an incredible mission for being uh, frugal in terms of, of expenses, remarkable uh, uh, technology uh, used, very basic at one level. But Mangalyaan, which was supposed to have a, a fairly finite period of, of, of life, is still around and it's still working. Um, so what, is that, what does that indicate for where we are as a nation in terms of our satellite technology, could we in the future attempt to do something on Mars? Oh, definitely. See, India is there. We should be, the world needs to know very clearly, India makes its own satellites, makes its own rockets. Uh, when Dr. Madhavan Nair was there, India did Chandrayaan-1, which was the maiden mission to moon. We landed a probe on, on the moon surface. Uh, we did Mangalyaan at a sub-100 million dollar mission. It is a very complex mission even to get into orbit. Now to land on Mars is a very tough call. But as a first step, India within the next couple of months is launching a probe to the moon, Chandrayaan 2, which will have a lander called Vikram lander and a rover which will go on to the moon surface. Subsequently, ISRO is already planning a second mission to the Mars called Mangalyaan 2 or MOM 2 in which there could well be a lander, there could be a rover, it's still up in the air for discussions on the scientific community but yes, India is definitely there and, and I am sure uh, Dr. Amitav Ghosh would have been having peanuts because every time something lands on another planet uh, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the scientists in the control room always have peanuts. And you <laughs> see those peanuts in the control room. I have visited there. Uh, you may call it superstition, you may call it whatever. But that is a tradition which even the Jet Propulsion Laboratory has that they have peanuts. When India's Mangalyaan was landing, uh, going into the orbit on Mars, JPL had sent a bottle of peanuts for the Indian scientists. So that's a tradition and I'm sure I can ask Dr. Ghosh whether he had peanuts or not.